If I stand over here a little bit closer, yes, yeah, fine. Then if I sit down, yeah, yeah. Uh, testing, testing, one, two. Welcome to the Village Green for round four action from the NPL Women's New South Wales competition. Thank you. Def should be AR1 because... And actually... Go on. Yes! No! We're fine! Why is it? No, you can't. Actually, nah. Uh, we'll see. It'd be a lot. No, motherfucker. Oh, God, they were. Oh, that's right. It's not up. So, one, two, three, five. One, two, three, one, two, three four, five, six. Okay, you guys. What did I write? So, Koyama's the defender. Oh, it's on Jeff Abrahams. Stanton, Baldana, 
Oliverier. Barman. No one changed. Yes. Twenty five, 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 twenty for University of New South Wales versus Sydney Olympic. Eric Subihani here on the mic from this lovely facility with a very nice view in the Moya Dodd stand. And we we'll set for an exciting contest between two teams that have started the season well. Uh, for the host, newly promoted University of New South Wales, they're still undefeated, still yet to suffer a loss in their life as a top tier club. One win and two draws to start the season. And last weekend, it was at this very facility where they drew one all with Bulls FC Academy. While for Sydney Olympic, they have suffered defeat la last week, but they're actually ahead of Olympic. I'll say uh, they're ahead of Uni in the table with six points to Uni's five, courtesy of wins in the opening two rounds for Olympic. One over Emerging Deaths and one over Northern Tigers. Now, Jeff Abraham's side trying to bounce back from uh, last weekend's defeat to Apia Leichhardt at Leichhardt Oval where they very much ran into the Charlotte Lancaster show, unfortunate for them. So, as we've seen most of the pre-match formalities, might as well try and at least sneak through uh, the starting lineup for, at least for the host UNSW. So, firstly, for them. In goal is a number 21, Ali Hinson. Then it's number four, Alira Toby. Number six, Chloe Smith. Number seven, Amanda Leviskevich. Number eight, Sonia Murphy. Number nine, Tiana Petkovsky. Number 14, Jess Mullins. Number 15, Sabine Montenegro. Number 20, Cassandra Christopher. Number 33, Margot Montagut. And number 88, Sarah Moore. So, meanwhile, a four Olympic. For them in goal, number 31, Sayaka Koyama. Then we're expecting a back three for Olympic. Number two, Gabrielle Peak. Number four, Aya Yamahata. Number three, Ebony McHugh Shaw. Four across the midfield. So in the center, we're expecting number 25, Priya Suriaga, and number 13, Tara Baudana. Number 33, Marley Stanton on the right side, and number eight, Brianna Oliverio on the left-hand side. And uh, Olympics front three, number 11, Rochelle Borromeo, number 17, Maxine Peake, and number nine, Demi Koulizakis. Right on cue, there's the whistle from the referee, Mia Velarde. Away we go, round four from the Village Green in Kensington. And by the way, might as well shout out the other two officials. And complete my shout-out for the third team. As I said, Mia Velarde has the whistle. She's in the center. The assistant closest to us is John Garcia. And the assistant who's uh, braving the brunt of the sun on the far side, he, as we see things, is Steph Hilton. So, as I said earlier, Olympic on the ball now with Yamahata passing to Gabrielle Peak, And now there's Suriaga, the ball out to Mali Stanton. <coughs> for the host reel it in by the way if you're less familiar with these two teams it's uh uni university of new south wales in uh, their standard colors although that's not what they wore two weeks ago against the jets it's the gold jerseys with the black shorts and it's sydney olympic as you'd expect from a team with olympic in their name it's blue and white for their kit uh, blue jerseys with the white pinstripes the blue shorts and the blue socks Yamahata back to Koyama, who then plays it forward. And McHugh Shore, who was outnumbered right in front of us here in the Moya Dodd stand. By the way, thanks for joining us, of course, on Football New South Wales YouTube. So nice and easy to uh, have a streaming platform for these comps this year. That's not just free, but you don't even need to uh, create an account. You can just um, log on, access YouTube.com, whether that's uh, through your laptop browser or via the mobile app. And... Yeah, you can watch watch this wonderful competition for free and live as well. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be bringing this to you. As there's Christopher, who almost trotted the ball. Could always be awkward for a player, but 
And it's all as well that ends well. And now I think that's almost a bigger first touch of the ball for the uni shot stopper, Alexandra Hinson. There's Alira Toby, by the way, she's made the switch over the offseason from Sydney Olympic to University of New South Wales. No doubt a uni number four will be keen to show her old club a thing or two this afternoon. And yes, I'm very grateful for the shade here in the stand because it's quite a warm one. And this is meant to be a winter competition, but it definitely does not feel like winter, especially in the early parts of the season. Leviskevich passing back to Mullins there. Now, Montagut linking with Toby, and I think I was actually on the mic here two weeks ago when uh, University of New South Wales earned their first win in first grade as a top-tier team, defeating Emerging Jets by five goals to nil. Uh, Lyra Toby was on the score sheet, and her and Montagut linked up very well that day. In fact, Lyra Toby has actually scored in all three of uh, Uni's games so far this season. So always nice to have a scoring streak, and... Now, Lyra Toby, a uh, long-time A-League winner fans will know her as a forward, but for UNSW, it's been decided that the best way, the best way for her is to, the best way for Lyra Toby is to be a kind of deeper-lying midfielder. As Kulazakis tries from an acute angle, and Ali Hinson almost caught in the middle of nowhere. I think she'd run out of goal to offer herself as an option for the pass back then. The ball was turned over, but Kulazakis could not take advantage and could not add to her tally of four goals for the 2024 season. By the way, as Hinson goes long from the goal kick, it's over Baudana, but I think it, it was Yamahata in the end with the header for Olympic. Now Stanton trying to use her speed on the far side. She's kept it in play and has the cutback as well on the defender. Now, it's bobbling around and then this might fall for Baudana who tries from range has a decent long distance shot on her does Tara Baudana but uh, we didn't quite see what she can do that time in fact Tara Baudana last year when she was with Sydney University scored uh, the goal that was nominated for goal of the year uh, that it was shown at the end of season awards so uh, pretty good honor to be for Tara Baudana to be nominated as having scored one of the 10 best goals across men's and women's, by the way, in NPL for the 2023 season. And that time she earned a point for her then Sydney Uni side against Bankstown City. Now she switched from Sydney Uni to Sydney Olympic, which is something quite a few of this Sydney Olympic team have done in re recent seasons. And going from Sydney Uni to Sydney Olympic, well, you could say that every, see that those players, in a sense, following in Courtney Vine's footsteps, which does seem like a good idea when you think about it. Header from Syriaga. Now Kulazakis. <coughs> Ball forward. It's Sonia Murphy who plays it back to Hinson. Now Mullins under pressure, so Uni's got to move the ball quick and has the high press worked out for them. Here's Kulazakis and she goes from outside the box. And that's well over the bar. So I might just run through the two benches. So uh, UNSW coach Pat McCann, he uh, can choose from the backup keeper is uh, Samantha Edwards, who's made the switch from Manly United in the offseason. It's also Jasmine Maguire, Amy Humphrey, Hannah Sharak, Alessia Dalpane, the scorer two weeks ago uh, when Uni beat the Jets here. And oh, Karina Medaglia is the final sub. Now here's Leviskevich trying to test the Olympic defense for speed. Leviskevich has a given away a free kick. And yes, in case you are familiar with what gets uploaded to Dribble, I know one of the goals from UNSW's victory over the Jets two years ago says, it does say Karina Medaglia, but yes, I was there. I was the commentator. It was definitely Alessia Dalpane who scored that fifth and final goal against the Jets. And the uni social media team agrees with me because that's what their graphic says. So let's go with that. Now, ooh, the right idea there. Leviskevich have found a decent bit of space near side. But uh, it's good positioning, I think, from McCushaw to block the through ball. Now, of course, uh, right into the swing of things, so uh, you've got plenty of choice. 
uh, for your viewing action this uh, this afternoon. And thank you so much for choosing this one. Uh, there was a women's game or NPL women's game yesterday. Uh, it was at the Arctic Circle where and a, a lot of thrills there in Macquarie Park. Uh, Northwest Sydney Spirit drawing two all with Manly United because of a 93rd minute equaliser from Emily Minette. Uh, we hope to see uh, that kind of drama this afternoon here. It would be great to see. There's also a game's currently in progress concurrently to this one. And a game that kicked off at the slightly odd time of 4.45 p.m. That was uh, Football New South Wales Institute versus Northern Tigers at Football New South Wales headquarters, Valentine Sports Park. And I might just hold that thought as Jess Mullins covers the run from Maxine Peak. Now Kulazakis blocked off on the edge of the box. But yes, uh, the other three, there were three other 5 p.m. kickoffs in addition to this one as Leviskevich is faced up by Brianna Oliverio, Olympics captain for today. Yes, the, the other 5 p.m. kickoffs um, up at Lake Macquarie Regional Football Facility. It's Emerging Jets versus Sydney University. And the voice of Central Coast Football, Pete Pryor, has traveled up and is uh, braving uh, the Lake Macquarie scissor lift as we speak. Also, concurrently to this one, Illora Stingrays versus Blacktown Spartans at Macedonia Park down on the south coast. And Wollongong Sax boy Thomas Phillips is calling that one. And the other 5 p.m. kickoff, MacArthur Rams versus Gladesville Ravens from Linwood Park. Now, corner kick, the first of the game. So that was good work by, I think it was Tiana Petkovsky. Yeah. And Petkovsky goes short, Montagut. Uh, looking for some variation and Ebony McHugh-Shaw has stuffed that out very quickly. Petkovsky looking to keep the tempo high. She's trying to catch Olympic off guard, but that's that set piece, those two set pieces, if you will, defended well by the visiting team. Maxine Peak had the eyes up looking for options and a good header from Jess Mullins. And Mullins with that very large black head then doing what commentators like and easy to pick her out so if I call her by the wrong name don't worry it's definitely my fault switched out by Hinson to Christopher and Christopher immediately pressed by Borromeo felt like there was no option but to play it safe and send it into the fence now well, Olympic wanted a f offside flag and eventually it does come from Steph Hilton who is unsurprisingly having to shield her eyes. Steph Hilton probably willing the sun to set as quick as possible so she can see things a little bit better. As Hinton plays it forward, that's going to be a tough one, in fact. Uh, they can't keep it in play. But by the way, the Olympic bench, so the six options for uh, for Olympic coach Jeff Abrahams, uh, their backup keeper is Susanna Bean-Smith, the other bench options, Daniel Rutstein, Lacey Bowling, Ella Rochester, Erin Diav Diavertiotis, and uh, Jamie Dallacamina. Now, what clearance that Chris Cassandra Christopher would have wanted, and it's Uni's first corner of the game. Is the delivery outswinger and good header from Montague towards the edge of the box but back into the mixer it goes and now Oliverio trying to turn she does turn and fires a shot but it trundles slowly I think the defensive pressure did enough there and it ends up being an easy save for Hinson also by the way uh, yeah, just to uh, complete my wrap-up of today's action in NPL Women's New South Wales as Toby with a little bit of a loopy touch and Baldana gets a foot in there. Now Mullins playing it to Christopher and uh, Oliverio by the way, notice how quick she is to press, we'll be able to see perfectly in the first half what Brianna Oliverio brings to the team. 
Very energetic. Gets up and down the flank all game. Now, opens up for Maxine Pig. Well, not for long. Shot blocked by Murphy. And then now that'll break for Toby. And Toby, Leviskevich with the hand up straight away. Toby, I don't think has seen it. Leviskevich got a hold a run. Instead, Toby goes centrally to Petkovsky. Petkovsky up against Gabriel Peak. Stanton providing uh, the second defender. Back it goes Petkovsky, left side. Decent ball, and there's the header off the bar from Chloe Smith, who timed her run very well. Snuck in between defenders, and Chloe Smith inches away from opening the scoring for UNSW. Uh, she scored two weeks ago here against a former side emerging Jets, did Chloe Smith. She's almost done it again. And... Uh, you see Chloe Smith, I'll look at some of these names. Also, Alira Toby's another one that have come here in the offseason. Chloe Smith, most recently, of uh, Central Coast Mariners in League One Women's. Uh, there's been some smart recruiting done by uh, University of New South Wales. In the offseason, you could say they've studied the other teams very well. Uh, Montagut holds off two challenges. Mia Velarde, not really interested in any appeals, and Olympic might have a counter here. Good speed shown by Maxine Peake, and it's in! Great goal from Maxine Peake, and Sydney Olympic have gatecrashed the party at the Village Green. And it was one through ball. Peake sprinted away from the defence, and it's a quality finish that gave Ali Hinson no chance. UNSW nil, Sydney Olympic one. Maxine Peaks doubled her tally for the 2024 season just, just before the quarter hour mark. It's an absolutely lovely goal. And uh, Sydney Olympic are in front. It's exactly what Jeff, Jeff Abrahams and the Sydney Olympic coaching team would have wanted. As I mentioned earlier, Uni trying the high press, by the way, and they end up forcing a loose pass uh, so they did mention uni lost last last week to Apia Leichhardt but I thought I was actually at Leichhardt over for that game and the 3-0 scoreline's harsh on them because really it's it's a period of maybe 5-10 to ten minutes where Charlotte Lancaster the player I like to call the Kiwi Katie McCabe she basically in that time she showed the very best of her abilities Scoring direct from a corner, then setting up two goals. And that was pretty much that. But other than that, I mean, other than that, I thought Olympic actually matched up here very well. Now, Jess Mullins trying to run all the way from the back end. McHughshaw just waited. I think she was waiting for the passing option. And looking for Oliveria, who couldn't quite catch up to it. But there, Jess Mullins. Well, we love a ball playing center back, do we? The football New South Wales media team and Jess Mullins, her enterprises. Want to throw in a good position for Uni. Now here she is again, and Toby. A touch brings her into a 50-50. Now breaks here, and the shot from range, that's great. What a shot from Sarah Moore. And we've seen early goals from both teams. Sarah Moore turned. She didn't have much space, but she had just enough. She's found the bottom corner, beaten Sayaka Koyama's outstretched hands. And we're all square here at the Village Green. Yeah, so I'd say, uh, look at my stopwatch. Barely, barely two minutes, if that, between those two goals. Two excellent strikes into the bottom corner. UNSW one, Sydney Olympic one. Oliverio. Moving forward straight from the kickoff, then back to Priya Shuriaga. Is Toby and up in the air Toby needs a defensive header and then that's the decision it's a free kick to the home side there you go you've seen a couple of goals already so we certainly hope you're enjoying this wherever you're watching it whether you're at home or on the go possibly watching by your phone and now, here's Maxine Peake, wide option. It's Molly Stanton. 
little clip ball into the box and it might break for Kulazakis. And Kulazakis, she's still got a chance at Demi Kulazakis. She's showing great strength there and persistence. The goal's absolutely flying in here. Sydney Olympic back in front, leading by two goals to one. And I think the holder play from Maxine Peake deserves a lot of credit. She found Marley Stanton in space on the far side. And the Stanton cross caused a little bit of havoc. And Demi Kulazakis, there she is, holding off multiple defenders for her fifth goal of the season. And finishing like that, scoring like that, that's why some fans call her the Demi Goddess. Uh, it was UNSW going direct from the kickoff. Leviskevich wasn't fast enough to reach that. And here's Olympics captain Oliverio. Now, Suriag under pressure. Three goals in 17 minutes, and I think we, it's not the last of the scoring. <laughs> I feel like it won't be the last of the scoring. Uh, given how well these two teams are attacking. <laughs> Baudana, tackled by Montagu. And now, there's a four or five up in this attack. Uh, for Uni, Petkovsky just held up there. It's good work by Baudana, who, yeah, it's a lesson for all the kids out there. Baudana lost the ball, I think it was her, but she didn't give up and, you know, pressed straight away. And at the very least, she slowed down that Uni attack. But now, that's... Uh, I think Yamahata, who's going to, to shepherd it out of play. I, mean, I thought it might have been a bit of a panic moment. Ended up being a relatively straightforward for Olympics number four. Uh, Kulazakis. That's another nice ball for Maxine Peake. Olympics two goal scorers for today. Stanton, and from way out, takes a hop off the synthetic turf, and it's straightforward for Hinson. So, uh, quite the opening. Three goals already, and now uh, Oliverio with more space than players have usually gotten on, on the field so far today. And uh, Stanton again, the target. That's a nice ball from Suriaga. Stanton will keep this in play. She's one on one with Sabine Montenegro. And Stanton, who helped set up the goal that put Olympic back in front. She's helped win the Olympic second corner. Just a brief look, going around the grounds, and can do that thanks to YouTube streaming. It's just as easy as opening up a bunch of tabs on my laptop. I can tell you Football New South Wales Institute leading, leading Northern Tigers by a goal to nil. Blacktown Stingrays leading Illawarra Stingrays by the same scoreline. And it's nil all between the Jets and Sydney Uni and between the Rams and the Ravens. Here's the corner, and oh, almost Maxine Peak forcing it from... A yard out. Uni had enough bodies in the way, and now Cassandra Christopher. She loves to overlap, and well, there's all this space for her to do so. Baudana trying to slow her down. Decent run from Petkovsky. Now Sarah Moore. Rebounds to Petkovsky. Christopher's still up in attack, and she's got a few gold jerseys to aim at. Now keepers up, and good claim under pressure. Safe hands. And that's what you want from your goalkeeper, because she would have known that the attackers were coming, but... Koyama's concentration was what it needed to be, and the attack is over. Toby wins possession, and uh, they're a bit compact, are they? So Toby tries from way out, and it's wide of the target. By the way, I just might, just might see. I've asked my fellow football New South Wales media for updates, and a man actually very familiar with UNSW, which is a longtime football New South Wales reporter and current uh, League One women's reporter, Justin Davies, 
He's um, yeah, been very kind enough to give me some score updates from League One Women's, uh, the competition, of course, that UNSW were in last year. So I <coughs> can tell you in the League One Women's match of the round, the stream game, because it's lovely that we get one stream game with commentary from uh, the women's second tier. And Bo Clements was on the mic to call uh, Camden Tigers defeating Southeast Phoenix by two goals to nil. Uh, also yesterday, in fact, South Coast Flame beat Southern Strikers 6-1. It was a one-all draw between Mount Joy Town Rangers and Hills United. And St. George FC beat the PNFC by five goals to nil. So, yes, that's an interesting, that's an interesting one to see uh, which team will be the next to follow in the footsteps of as Christopher plays it back to Hinson and Hinson sends it into the grandstand. Uh, a couple of spectators had to be alert. Uh, always got to be alert when you're at a game. Actually saw an unfortunate spectator get hit in the head at the Arctic Circle during a Spirit Manly game yesterday. It's uh, not very pleasant. So yes, good to see everyone was paying attention there. But yes, of course, League One women's very interesting. McHugh Shaw playing it forward. That's uh, Kulazakas can't reach that. But yes, of course, the League One women's who with one team getting promoted, one team from that division, one team getting relegated from this division. It will be fascinating to see who follows in UNSW's footsteps to become the next promoted side to NPL Women's New South Wales. And also, the year prior, we saw Gladeswell Ravens and Bulls FC Academy earn their place in the top tier. So that'll be something to keep an eye on as McHugh Shaw loses out to Chloe Smith. Smith's got room. Only Sarah Moore in front of her, though Pekovsky was trying her best to make up the ground. Here's Montenegro. 1-2 with Moore, I think it was, on the far side. Now, it's Murphy looking to keep it alive for Uni. There's Toby, and that's well read by Yamahata. Oliverio in the battle of the overlapping wide players. Can't be Christopher that time. And then a bit of a tumble there, but it's easy for Koyama to gather. Now Sarah Moore leaves an opponent on the turf. On we go. Stanton, that's a strong. Actually, you've Stanton who took a tumble, got up straight away and made a very nice tackle on the far side. Montagu going back to Mullins. Uh, Christopher, and I think it's too many blue jerseys in a way that time. Skevich will not uh, catch up with that. So yes, by the way, I think I will. I do leave stories half finished a lot of the time, but yeah, I think I'm not sure if I mentioned the f the final game for this weekend in NPL Women's New South Wales, a 6:45 p.m. kickoff, and the second half of what is a rare Valentine Sports Park doubleheader. And Bulls FC Academy have uh, moved their home game against RPL Leichhardt to Football New South Wales headquarters in Western Sydney. 6.45 p.m. kickoff there, and that one will be called by the People's Champion, Nicholas Kutniak, who uh, calls various other... does commentary for various other things and is uh, making a quick switch of mentality if, to call football. Uh, and 
Uh, what a game that'll be to finish the weekend as possible counter-attack for Olympic here. And then well, it's strong in the 50-50 and the run from Oliverio. Kulazakis is ahead of her. So Kulazakis has found the space. And then I think that was Murphy. That's also done well, not just to win the ball, but also prevent the corner. Now that, oh, that's a good shout there from Ali Hinson. We could hear that. The ball forward and took a little bit of a flick off uh, uni head as well. Now Montenegro. Finding the wide option, which is Sarah Moore, Uni's goal scorer for this afternoon. Now Oliveira playing it forward. Mullins read it well. And couldn't really as a centre back. They always tell you as a centre back, never let the ball bounce. Now Montenegro, who tries from distance and takes a bounce, Toyama gathers. Getting to open up. Oh. And yeah, it's promising for uh, the neutrals at least who uh, will be tuning in, wanting to see plenty of action. We've already seen uh, three goals. Uh, all three goals came in the opening 17 minutes. So now we're getting close to the half hour mark. And now McCushaw sends one up into the air. Who's the spin going to favor? I think Oliveria wanted to use her body. Montagut was able to sneak in. But uh, it's good defending from McHugh Shaw. As Yamahata plays it to Gabrielle Peak. Now Marley Stanton dropping back just to provide the option. And Olympic have switched the point of attack. Now Maxine Peak. And Maxine Peak again. Back to Gabrielle. I assume they're sisters. I never. I probably should have checked that before we started. <laughs> anyway. There's the switch, and again, more good movement from Oliverio. There's McHugh Shaw. Oh, by the way, sorry, I was just distracted. I saw someone walk past in a Western Suburbs Magpies shirt. Good to see they're still around in some form. That's a memory of my childhood. Anyway. UNSW free kick. But yeah, just past the half hour mark we are at the Village Green, a lovely facility in Kensington. If you've just joined us, Eric Subihano on the mic here. Thanks for joining us on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. The score is currently UNSW 1, Sydney Olympic 2. Olympic scoring their goals via Maxine Peake and Demi Kulizakis in the 14th and 17th minutes. But in between those two goals, a 16th minute strike from Sarah Moore. That's how we got to where we are so far. Petkovsky turns, goes from range, saved by Koyama. And I think, I mean, despite the fact Chloe Smith did score from outside the box. Sorry, not Chloe Smith. Sarah Moore. I think Olympic won't mind shots from that kind of range. Of course, it is very hard to score from there. Another score update uh, from League One Women's. Thanks again, Justin Davies. But 
There's a two-all draw between promotion candidates, Bankstown City and Central Coast Mariners. And oh, that's lovely from Yamahata, by the way. And then the pass blocked by Toby, but uh, actually Mia Velarde has brought it back for a free kick. And Davies giving me all the detail, actually. Telling me that Hills United's goal in there. Uh, one all draw against Mount Druid Town Rangers, scored by Ashling Davidson. I feel like Ashling's one of the best headers of the ball in that division. She'd actually go close to being one of the best headers of the ball in the top tier as well if she were ever to play in NPL. So I feel like I know how that goal was scored. But that's a nice header, by the way, from Leveskevich. And Petkovsky wasn't quite quick enough. There's Gabriel Peake coming across to cover. Montagu wins it off Kulazakis. Now Murphy and I think Marley Stanton uh, read that pass and peeks away. She's taken a tumble, as has Murphy. Now Mullins, uh, did she find Sarah Moore in space? It did. It was, but I think it's unfortunate for Moore. Came at just that awkward height. The slightly loose touch allowed Gabriel Peak to steal in. Now Borromeo skips past. Is it? This skips past the, the challenge, and then, yeah, again, more. Actually, good, more confident keeping from Ali Hinson. Confident shout, and then gathering the ball right at the edge of their box. <laughs> Header from Christopher. And now Leveskevich. And that's actually good. Good reading of the play from Yamahata. Seeing that her team at Miku Shore had stepped up and then been by the ball had bounced over her, so Yamahata instantly uh, moving across to cover that space. And it's, it's a good demonstration of how a, a back line, whether it's three or four, is supposed to work. Borromeo. And Borromeo again. Oliverio wants the switch and she'll get it. So she resumes her battle with Christopher. Now Kulazakis tracked all the way by Murphy. And as Murphy, she's going to press Oliverio as well. And Gabrielle Peak, this is almost the furthest forward we've seen her in free play. And she's going to continue her run, give Stanton the option. That's nice play from the number two. Now Gabby Peak into the middle and then good, confident goalkeeping from Hinson. Now, that's a nice run from Kulazakis. And well, she's beating Christopher, and it did not. Did not beat actually Leveskevich, that was. Getting back to defend inside her own box. Now, Baldana tries to curl one. And that's a great ball, and ooh. Maxine Peek had the. And she knew what kind of ball she wanted. She got it pretty much, but it's a little bit too much swerve on that one. That's still a very lovely pass uh, from Baldana. Now Syriaga, Maxine Peak, and there's the run from Kulazakis, and Christopher, good covering at the expense of the corner.
Suriaga providing the short option and in fact that's a different type of variation so Yamahata sends it up into the sky down the far post decent ball and there's Mikushaw didn't get the contact she wanted had to wait a long time for it to come down and now well one of my favorite sayings the set piece is an opportunity for both teams to score and Ali Hinson is trying to take advantage of that with the quick throw numbers not really working in Leveskevich's favor there but she's held it up well nicely timed run from Montagut Petkovsky and now Smith, Smith met with a firm challenge from Gabriel Peek and then the shot from Petkovsky is saved. standing off but now of course it's easy it's easy for us to be relaxed in the shade here but it's got to be hard work out there still very much in the warmest part of the NPL season so perhaps uni taking a quick breather before they press first time pass from Kulazakis and now Stanton uh, yeah Kulazakis it, like, it was a decent idea there from the number nine saw the space or kind of space between uni defenders but see, the ball had too much pace on it for um, Stanton to catch up Now Baldana. Now the ball out to Oliverio. And Maxine Peak making the run. She shoots on the turn and then it's there we go. It ends up being easy for Hinson. It's one of those ones where it, it, someone if someone had gambled and run it at the far post, they might have had a chance there. But in the end, the uni shot stopper has a, a straightforward task. Leveskevich with nice control. Now Smith. To Moore, two former emerging Jets linking up there. There's another full. There's at least one other former emerging Jet, by the way, uh, in the match day squads for this one. That's the Olympic backup keeper, Susanna Bain Smith. Now, and, and back to Pico. I was waiting yeah, for that because it did look like it was offside. And yes, uh, Steph, Hilton, Steph Hilton raises the flag. So that could be an interesting ball and Christopher's gone all the way up almost as the most forward person for uni on the right hand side did not catch up to that one but it will be a throw in in a good position Montagu decent ball and a bit awkward for Gabriel Peach she gets enough of a header on it and I think Suriaga helps her out by completing the clearance now Maxine Peak would space the turn. Stanton, I think, well, she might have wanted Peak to play a wait a little bit more before playing that pass. And it's covered off by Uni. Now, Oliverio. And a good run from Borromeo. And Oliveira again looks to the far post and it's there from Molly Stanton. A great ball from Olympics captain. And Stanton scores her first of the season to double Olympics lead and make it 3-1. What a cross that was from the left-hand side. And I mentioned earlier about an earlier cross ball from a similar position needing someone to gamble at the far post. That time Molly Stanton did just that and she's been rewarded with... Her first goal of the season and Olympics third. It's UNSW one, Sydney Olympic three.
So there's more than half of this game to go, but it's looking good for Olympic's third win of the season. At this at this stage. And UNSW with quite a bit of work to do if they are to if they are to not fall to uh, their first defeat of the season. Kulazakis, and there's Stanton. Of course, she'll be full of energy after that goal. Nice finish as well. Yeah, the cross ain't bad either. And Hinton electing to punch. Good distance on that. Now McHugh Shaw up from the back. And finds Baudana. Baudana strikes from range. And I think, yeah, I think she was trying to curl it back in towards the goal and just didn't quite get the curl she wanted. Hinton saves. Wind's going to make it tricky to judge long passes and clearances now. And I think that's going to be a uni free kick. So now a chance maybe to take a breather. Not long left until half time. And perhaps Pat McCann will be keen to um, have a chat to his team in the dressing sheds. Now, uh, Christopher again getting forward from right back, and so far forward, in fact, that she was offside. Montenegro, pressure from Stanton into, about to say she cleared it, but she's actually a very nice pass to Sarah Moore. Uh, Toby and there's Gabby Peak stepping in very nicely. It's kind of a pattern. It's uh, settled just a little bit. Oh, the commentators curse as I say that. Leviskevich wins the ball off them. And it's also cooled down nicely. Uh, pitch covered in shade now. Perhaps the sun is ducked behind a cloud. So assistant on the far side, Steph Hilton, will be the most grateful person here that that has happened. And yeah, it's actually, uh, if it's going to be like that, that bodes well for the tempo to keep up into the second half. As I'm sure the players could do with a little bit less direct sunlight as they're trying to play this game. Yamahata clearing it into the fence. Now Montagut, Smith. There's the cross from Petkovsky, couldn't quite wrap her foot around it. And Koyama. Actually, just uh, letting the clock run down a little bit more. Didn't bother catching it, just let it run out for a goal kick. In fact, well, it's like she won't take the goal kick. It'll be McHugh Shaw. And then, and that's that. Mia Vallado blows the whistle and the end of what has been a great first half for Sydney Olympic because they are leading it. UNSW by a three goals to one. The visitors took the lead in the 14th minute with a nice finish into the bottom quarter by Maxine Peak. Uni struck back almost straight away. Sarah Moore scoring from range to level the scores. But then a minute after that, Olympic were back in front, courtesy of Demi Kulazakis' fifth goal of the season. She showed great persistence there. And then just before halftime, Marley Stanton scored her first goal of the season to make it 3-1 off a great cross from Brianna Oliverio. This is Eric Subiano on the mic, live from the Village Green in Kensington. We'll take a short break, and then we'll be back for the second half.
Welcome back to the second half of round four NPL Women's New South Wales coverage for 2024. We're going live from the Village Green. Eric Subihana here with the commentary for UNSW versus Sydney Olympic. And it's currently looking good for the visitors. Sydney Olympic leading by three goals to one. As Amir Valade blows the whistle to get the second half underway. And if you've just joined us, Olympic scored in the first half their goals from Maxine Peak, Demi Kulazakis, and Marley Stanton, while the UNSW strike was from Sarah Moore. And I'm just currently scanning the shirt numbers. I'm also watching that ball. It hops over the fence and into the stand, but thankfully doesn't bother myself or today's camera operator, Rob. But I know Olympic are as they were to begin the game, just double checking to see if uh, that is the same, if it's the same case also for uni, I think so. As Christopher plays it towards Leveskevich, and Leveskevich might get on the end of this, might might have gotten around McHugh Shaw. Her shot uh, does not have the power to trouble Sayaka Koyama. And just going around the grounds elsewhere, I was just having a quick view of their YouTube streams at halftime. It's currently uh, Football New South Wales Institute leading Northern Tigers by two goals to one. Nil all between MacArthur Rams and Gladesville Ravens. Now, if you've been flipping through the streams like I have, don't be confused by um, their graphic for Jets Uni. It says Jets are winning 1 0. It's actually the other way around. Uni are leading the Jets by a goal to nil. And uh, briefly, well, there's actually some unfortunate scenes. Um, Blacktown Spartans currently leading Illawarra Stingrays by a goal to nil, but there's actually been a serious injury. And uh, yeah, if you're squeamish, this is your warning. Do not watch it. So uh, yeah, that's a hope. Obviously, the, good to see that the best medical care is going on down there, but that game has been paused uh, due to that injury. And just to briefly complete uh, wrap, just in case you missed uh, me speak about yesterday's game, which was a thrilling two-all draw between uh, Northwest City Spirit and Manly United yesterday afternoon at the Arctic Circle. Uh, the Queens from the Northern Beaches, Manly United, they took the lead through Daisy Arrowsmith, scoring against one of her old clubs. Uh, then there was... Actually, Spirit took the lead with a double from Morgan Roberts, but in the 93rd minute, Emily Manette with a wonderful swerving strike to equalize, make a tool, and earn Manly United a point. And rounding off this weekend's action in NPL Women's New South Wales, it's at Bulls FC Academy versus RPL Leichhardt, 6.45 p.m. from Valentine Sports Park, and the people's champion, Nicholas Kutniak, will be calling that one for you. Um, now, Chloe Smith... And we're putting in the hard yards and has gotten to that ahead of Gabrielle Peak. There's the pass, which takes a hop. Hop doesn't really bother. And then McHugh Shaw and then Stanton. Somewhat unconventional pass, but she's found her captain, Brianna Oliverio. Actually, good, good positioning from Stanton in that phase of play. Gabby Peak had moved to out wide uh, to cover the threat, so Stanton just dropped into the space in behind. So a good positional awareness from one of Olympic's goal scorers for today as the shadows begin to lengthen and the, the breeze uh, start, is getting a little bit stronger here in uh, Kensington now uh, that now, yes, I am 99.9% .9 confident that's been no halftime subs, although I've seen a bit of a change in approach from uni coach Pat McCann. He's uh, swapped Chloe Smith and Sarah Moore, his two, form, or two of his former emerging Jets players. Sarah Moore started on the left wing, but she was on the left wing in the opening period. Chloe Smith was kind of in a central attacking midfielder role, but now that's the other way around. We're seeing Moore line up centrally, and Smith is out wide, so let's see... Uh, what kind of a challenge that presents uh, for the Olympic as they try to see this out and uh, grab their third victory in the opening four games of the season. Stanton can't reel it in. Smith uh, might open up here, so Petkovsky has a Gabrielle Peak scrambling, and she's one and one She delivers a flat one. It might get all the way through to Christopher. It does. And now Leviskevich could get to this first. She's looped it over her head and into the net. That's a lovely finish from Leviskevich to pull a goal back. She was alive to the loose ball and the invention there to flick it over her head, over the keeper's head, over Yamahata's head and into the net. 
It's now a University of New South Wales 2, Sydney Olympic 3. Uh, it's just what the students wanted to strike back in the opening ex exchanges of the second half. And it's Amanda Leviskevich's first goal of the season. And a very lovely goal it was as well. By the way, thanks once more to Justin Davies. He gave me another score update from League One Women's at half time. So in the Southwest Sydney Derby, Marconi Stallions nil, SD Raiders two. And of course, a game that would have just finished. If I'm fortunate, Justin will give me an update from that one before that one's done. It was the later kickoff in League One Women's, the 4 p.m. kickoff, Blacktown City, complete with their new technical director, Matt Costantini. There's a lot of coaching experience in League One Women's and in this division, actually, but Blacktown City up against Interlines. Montenegro, a pass blocked by Kula Zarkas. Yes, um, yes. Good ball by Hinson to Toby, and then outside of the foot, giving Petkovsky something to chase. Gabriel Peak there as well. Petkovsky's one out. And getting the shouts from Montenegro for one. Now Stanton is trying to help out Peak. And then there's Smith. Toby, tackled by Borromeo. And I think Toby, who you know, can strike one from range, we saw that two, week ex two weeks ago when she scored against the Jets. And Borromeo prevented any such long distance shot from happening. Now Toby. Space in behind McHugh Shaw. Leviskevich should get to that. She does. Got plenty of gold jerseys with her. And into the near post. And it might come all the way through. And it was Gabby Peak who prevented Tiana Petkovsky from having a tap in. They've had a nice battle to start the second half. But Leviskevich almost found the goal from an acute angle. His fingertips from Koyama. And Gabby Peak saving the day and keeping Olympic in front. His header, and that one is a rather more straightforward task for Koyama. In fact, she'll wait until she's pressed before using her gloves. Right, in case you missed it, just to wrap up of those other League One women's scores in the stream game, called by Bo Clements, former Black Town City ground announcer when he was a literal child. <laughs> now, now, he's very much an adult and a value part of our media team, but yes, in the League One women's stream game, that was kicked off at 3 p.m. Camden Tigers do, Southeast Phoenix nil. There was also Mount Druitt Town Rangers 1, Hills United 1, Bankstown City 2, Central Coast Mariners 2, St. George FC 5, Nippian FC 0, uh, South Coast Flame 6, Sutherland Strikers 1, and as I said earlier, Marconi Stallions 0, SD Raiders 2. Yamahata playing it out to McHugh Shaw. Now, Leviskevich couldn't force a way through. It goes back to Mullins and back to the keeper, Hinson. It's pressed a good energy by Maxine Peak. She's always willing to, she's always good to lead the press from the front. Peak seemingly kind, the kind of play who never stops running. And now here's the other Peak, Gabrielle, and she wants to shepherd it and does well, protecting Koyama from the advancing Chloe Smith. So Koyama going for safety there. <clears throat> as McHugh Shaw just uh, safely playing it over the sideline Yamahata with the header it looks like it will break for Toby he's pressed immediately there's more Maxine Peak pressing and Alira Toby has fended her off now I might just remind people of the two lineups out there and just before because we are getting to the time when teams like to make, oh, when coaches like to make substitutions, as that is sent, it's Sonia Murphy covering against Peak again, and that goes over the sideline there. But for uni, in goal, number 21, Ali Hinson, their back force from left to right. Number 15, Sabine Montenegro. Number 8, Sonia Murphy. Number 14, Jess Mullins. Number 20, Cassandra Christopher. Three in the uni midfield. Number 33, Margot Montagut. Number 4, the captain, Alira Toby. And just in front of them, well now, number 88, Sarah Moore. And three up front, on the right, Amanda Leviskevich. On the left, number six, Chloe Smith. And number nine, it's centre forward, number nine, Tiana Petkovsky. Now for Sydney Olympic, in, for them in goal, number 31, Sayaka Koyama. It looks like they've got three at the back. Number two, Gabrielle Peak. Number four, Aya Yamahata. And number three, Ebony McHugh Shaw. 
Four across the midfield from left to right. Number eight, the captain, Brianna Oliverio. Number 13, Tara Baldana. Number 25, Priya Siriaga. And number 33, Marley Stanton. Three up front, number nine, Demi Kouazakis. As that cross takes a touch, and it's actually going to be called for a handball. So quickly, that Olympic front three, number nine, Demi Kouazakis. Number 17, Maxine Peake. And number 11, Rochelle Borromeo. And another shout out to the two coaches, uni coach by Pat McCann and Olympic co coach by Jeff Abrahams, both you new to the women's first grade head coaching role at their respective clubs for 2024. Bit of a breather for myself, that's a lot of reading, but oh, we should probably should remind people of the subs at some point. In fact, Pat McCann might not give me a chance because I reckon he's about to make a double sub, just looking across to the far side of the field. But in the meantime, here's this set piece coming up from Kulazakis to the far post. It's over McHughshaw. And skipping away from Maxine Peak. In fact, yep. Now we're going to see two of those uni subs. I think I see Hannah Sharak, number 17. So Cassandra, yep. So it's number 17, Hannah Sharak, and number 24, Alessia Dalpane. Coming onto the field, making way. Number 33, Margot Montagut, and number 20, Cassandra Christopher. Let's see how that works out. So are they straight swaps, or is the any further kind of reshuffle? In fact, I think Sharak's actually... Hang on. Well, uh, we've got a bit of a hold up. Might be some confusion over who was actually supposed to make way and who wasn't. So, a bit of admin work here for the unis coaches and the match officials. So, in fact, Mia Velarde has come across to sort things out. I might take a drink while I'm looking at all this. Of course, technically, once you leave the field, you aren't supposed to come back on. So, yeah, as we see, actually, it is as we said it is. So, they've swapped the right backs. Number 24 for Uni have swapped the right backs. Alessia Delpane, number 24, coming on for Cassandra Christopher. And number 17, Hannah Sharak, replacing Margot Montagut. So that's the first. That's the first two of the maximum five subs that Uni can make. Of course, they have only two more substitution windows. Neither sub, neither team made a sub at halftime. By the way, I want this thought. The other four bench options for Pat McCann for uni. Samantha Edwards is the backup keeper. The others, Jasmine McGuire, Amy Humphrey, and Karina Medalia. Well, Jeff Abrahams, he can choose from his backup keeper, Susanna Bain-Smith. As Koyama finds Baudana. That's nice to beat the press from Olympic. The other Olympic subs, Daniel Rutstein, Lacey Bowling, Ella Rochester, Aaron Diaviatiotis and uh, Jamie Dalacamina. <coughs> and Kushaw plays it into the Olympic technical area. Of course. Uh, definitely, as this competition develops, there's certainly no such thing as easy games. There's a bit of intrigue in uh, the four next four fixtures, which I noted down before the game started uh, for both these teams. To see if I can go through them at the appropriate time in the game. Good change of pace for Toby to get past Kulazakis. And then it could have been a bit of a sore one from Yamahata. She stooped ahead with Chloe Smith also raising her boot. Now Montenegro stopped by Stanton, and Stanton... Now charging forward in support. Borromeo has Maxine Peak's run. Finds it. They double up at Peak. And then Sonia Murphy with the covering. Where does the ball end up? It's a throw in right by the corner flag. Now Stanton. Maxine Peak. Back to Gabriel Peak. Decent ball. And now, might break for Kulazakis. Shots blocked. And the second effort, maybe from Sioriaga. Kulazakis again. She shoots and uh, might have taken a touch. Hinson, Hinson prevents it from crossing the goal line. So, Olympic looking for a fourth goal, looking to restore a two goal cushion. Uh, five goals already. And uh, judging on what we've seen in the opening 60 minutes or so, plenty of chance for there to be a couple more goals. As Chirac goes back to Murphy. Now Sarah Moore. Getting the shots from Leviskevich instead goes the other way. 
to Chirac and then more shouts. That's a nice ball. Nice little scoop from Chirac towards Smith, but Smith's been pinged for offside. And now Jeff Abraham's looking to prepare. Is it going to be a double sub? I see two Olympic players in Bibbs standing up. So yes, always a test when the technical area is opposite to our filming position. In fact, it's like Pat McCann. It's like Pat McCann is might make subs. It might be not long before Pat McCann makes some subs as that will be a corner kick. Stanton winning the corner off Montenegro. Olympics fourth corner of the game going by my very, very manual tally. Certainly not official. And Kulazakis will take this one. So. That's Samantha Edwards. The uni keeper is her bib off. We might see a keeper sub, just like we did two weeks ago. Huh. No, must check whether they've done that in other, any other games, uni. As the corner comes in, and it's Hinson with a little bit of a fumble, but luckily straight at her feet. Nothing to really give any of the Olympic attackers a chance. We're going to see a keeper sub. Now I'm really curious as to what what's happened in the other games. Now I'm really glad I did my research and luckily through for research reasons I knew which one of those names on the list was the backup keeper. But yes, Ali Hinson makes way. I have to, I have to say despite conceding three goals, a pretty solid hour or so in the uni goal. Ali Hinson, number 21, will be replacing the uni goal by number 61, Samantha Edwards. And number 29, Karina Medallia's on the field as well. She'll replace number six, Chloe Smith. And Chloe Smith exited us, exited on the near touchline, so I've got to have my eyes all over the place to see what was going on there. There we go, a keeper sub. One more sub and one more window for uni coach Pat McCann. As Maxine Peake finding Kulazak is inside the box, gets enough room to Dig the cross out, it's Leviskevich back defending. Now, Borromeo, she shoots and then an early tester for the new keeper, Samantha Edwards. Uh, she'll be thankful it was straight at her, but uh, she's got a touch. Now the final, ah, oh, Justin Davies completing the set, giving me all seven. League one women scores, so I'll get that, get that last score to you in a moment. Now, nice ball for Maxine Peake. Flag stays down, and the little toe poke. It's across the face of goal. Kulazakis keeps it alive. Now Stanton and Chirac back defending. And the new, newly introduced player for uni just going for safety. By the way, uh, it's good news for the team some people call the pride of Western Sydney, and that is, of course, Blacktown City. They defeated Inter Lions by three goals to nil, and some extra information. It's good to see Cassidy Chichi, who's had a horrendous run with injury, scored with a first touch off the bench for Blacktown. So it's good news for them and good news for uh, their new technical director, Matt Costantini. And Blacktown looking good because, I mean, I can't give up, can't give away everything, but I suggest, I feel like they'll have a stream game in a few weeks or so. That's my suspicion anyway. Now Kulazakis brings it brings it down, has the runners. Might go her own way. Here's Kulazakis, and that's brilliant. What a brilliant goal from Demi Kulazakis. Firstly, she trapped it brilliantly, kept the composure, and used Maxine Peak's run as a decoy, made space, and it's a left foot thunderbolt that the keeper could do nothing about. It's another two goal cushion for Sydney Olympic. They're leading by a four goals to two. And a little bit of breathing room for Jeff Abrahams and uh, the Olympic coaching staff.
now. Can Olympic make it five? There's Toby back defending against Peak. And yeah, gee, well, thought she'd won the ball cleanly. In fact, she needs to redo her, her captain's armband, but Mia Velarde has pulled it back for a foul. And now Olympic, that's going to be their first change. My guess is it's Lacey Bowling, but she will turn around. Is it a number six? Hey, I got something right. Lacey Bowling number six is going to replace. Yeah. Lacey Bowling number six replacing number 13, Tara Baldana. So. Now, what we've seen, we've seen Molly Stanton move over to the left side of the Olympic midfield. Lacey Bowling on the right side of the midfield. So that must mean Brianna Oliverio. Is in central midfield, and uh, that'll be nothing to phase the Olympic captain. I remember, actually, remember um, when she was at Sydney Uni having a chat with former Sydney Uni coach Alex Aparkas, and he told me, mate, basically, Brand has played in almost every position for us, so it should be nothing to worry the Olympic faithful who've gathered here today at a rapidly cooling Village Green, Maxine Peak shooting off target. By the way, I'm in the mood for live score updates. So, yeah. Leichhardt Oval. Well, it's another 3-0 win to the home side this week at Leichhardt Oval. But this time it's Sydney FC defeating Adelaide United by three goals to nil in A-League women's. Goals from a very recent League One women's player, by the way. Kaylee Tallon-Henneker, the victory player. And then also Mackenzie Hawksby and Courtney Vine. So Sydney looking in a great position to win yet another A-League women's premiership. That's like five, six. It's a lot. They've won a lot. Yamahara shepherding, doing what every central defender likes to do there. Goal kick. Huh. Yeah, Siriaga. And Molly Stanton moved from right wing to left wing. Still looking to cause havoc. She's up against one of the new uni players, Dalpane. Murphy clears into the fence. Decent first touch there from that assistant coach. Too far away to see if it's an Olympic coach or a UNSW coach. Dalpane forced to defend again. Smashes the ball into Maxine Peak. Back to the goalkeeper it goes. And now Edwards at least gets it out of the box. But now Lacey Bowling, known as a bit of a speedster, Especially from a time, I think, at Southern Strikers. If my memory serves me correctly, back when they were just known as Southern Shire FA. Now, Oliverio, bowling. <coughs> and Kulazakis, quick feet. She's on a hat-trick, of course. And she's won the free kick. Meanwhile, but by the way, don't worry, I'm still trying to see if Uni have made keeper subs in all of their games. It's good to have the match center right in front of me so I can do such research. Anyway, the variation, Kulazakis goes short. Suriaga, decent ball, parried by Edwards and Chirac. Yeah, it's a, it's, as a keeper, good keeping, but you do need a little bit of luck in those situations in crowded penalty areas. Lacey bowling. Clean tackle there. And it's like, well, we might. Oh, see, it's a bit of a sore one for Leviskevich. And. I oh, have to wait to see on her welfare. She's up eventually. And. Uh, she's uh, having a discussion with Mia Velarde. Yeah. And it will be a, a throw in. Dalpane and 
Gets past Stanton. Into the box and away by Yamahata. I can tell you. <laughs> it seemed like UNSW only do the keeper sub when I'm the commentary. They didn't do it in their other two games this season. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't often get to call a keeper sub that isn't due to injury or a red or a red card, and so now fielder needs to be sacrificed. But there, just willingly, a healthy and non non red carded keeper has been substituted in two of the games I've called this season. I think that's the first two times that's happened in my commentary career. And Toby wanted to take a free kick, but Miovalade is not having any of that. So now a more traditional, so to speak, set piece coming up. And in the dying moments, Football New South Wales Institute leading by three goals to one over Northern Tigers, although a little bit of a disclaimer, I've noticed one error in a live score graphic today. So Check that for yourself. Check your own sources. That's what I say. And MacArthur Rams leading Gladewell Ravens by a goal to nil. Now, decent ball and that flying punch from Koyama. No uni players. Well, it would have been hard to take advantage of that. The, she, actually, more of a little flick than a, a punch, so to speak. Ball ro rolled out wide for a throw in. And bowling clears into touch. Now, Scorba. <laughs> the score display Jets Uni it says Jets 1 Uni 2 but given that earlier area of a Uni goal being marked down as a Jets goal does that mean Sydney Uni are leading 3-0? Who can say? Okay and I can report well it does look like after an incredibly long stoppage you actually you actually have a, a fair bit of Stingrays versus Spartans to watch when we're done here is that a very unfortunate injury stoppage I meant earlier. They, the score bug, they kept the clock running there as bowling can't keep that one in play. So down at Macedonia Park, we ended up with, well, I mean, this technically it's not 41 minute stoppage time, but sort of like more or less a 40 minute break in play due to that uh, injury to a Stingrays player. Now Maxine Pig drills it across the face of goal. Stanton couldn't catch up to it. Uh, great idea. And that was the space to hit the ball into. But no one at the far post to capitalize. Second Olympic sub coming up. I'm not confident enough to get guess this one. Oh, so actually, ah, this is going to be a test. Both teams are subbing at the same time. Well, for uni, that's either got to be Jasmine Maguire or Amy Humphrey. And it is Tiana Petkovsky, I reckon, that's made way. Let's see, it's good to be over here. Jasmine Maguire is on. Number three, she's gone straight to a left back. That's going to be all kinds of reshuffling coming on, on here. And Sabine Montenegro has moved into midfield. And I think Alira Toby's gone up front. Here's Montenegro. First touch as part of that uni central midfield trio. And she's stopped by Oliveria, who also uh, moved into central midfield during the second half. That's, uh, by the way, apologies, actually. Now, let's end, oh, Leviskevich has had a tough old time of it in the last five minutes or so. Another sore one. By the way, number five, Daniel Rutstein. She's on. Apologies, did not see who was replaced. I'll have to do this by process of elimination. Might be Ebony, Ebony McHugh Shaw might be the Olympic player who's in a little bit of bother, although at least the number three's on on her feet now. So Maxine Peak, possibly off frame, depending on how closely Rob has zoomed in. 
Maxine Peak and Demi Kulazakis getting some instructions, taking advantage of this break in play. It's a bit of a discussion between McCushaw, Oliverio, and Stanton, I think, as well. Still trying to figure out who that second Olympic player who was who was uh, replaced. My apologies, Ben. Uh, it's unfortunate. It looks to be the end of the shift for Leviskevich prematurely. Uh, it's taken a couple of heavy knocks. She's being helped off the field. So uh, that's an unfortunate one. Of course, um, Pat McCann's emptied the bench. So UNSW have uh, going to have to see this one out with 10 players as we head into uh, the final 15 minutes of the game. Uh, this still trying to figure it out. I think Daniel Rutstein came on for Priya Suriaga and then she's possibly as a forward and Rochelle Borome has dropped into midfield. I'll see how Olympic line up after this set piece. Everyone back for Olympic. And Toby dinks it in. Header from Kulazakis. Doing some def defending now in addition to scoring two very crucial goals. Uh, bowling. And the keeper is off the line, but uh, that's bowling and not uh, troubling the uni goal there. Yeah, that's it. That is actually is, as I said. Yeah, Borome into midfield after Priya Suriaga left the field. And Daniel Rutstein is now part of that Olympic attacking trident with Maxine Peake pressing the ball now. And Demi Kulazakis. Oh, nice skill. Jess Mullins walking the tightrope there under pressure. And wins the free kick as well. More oh, ball playing centre back work there. More uh, off touch off the head, then uh, stopped by Borromeo. Now Oliverio. Kulazakis. And yeah, decent ball and the touch. Well, let's see. Will this count as a back pass? Oh, actually, no, yeah. So that's, that's, that's there. That, you couldn't say that was an intentional back pass. So Sam Edwards using the gloves. Yamaha and bowling couldn't reel it in. Now, a decent throw there from Gabriel Peak. When it out, throw it down the line. And bowling he keeps this one in play. Rutstein. Moving ahead of her, and now low towards Maxine Peak. I'll go to Rutstein, and she has bowling on that side. Jasmine Maguire has to do some defending. Decent cutback, Rutstein again, and then just overcooks it, trying to get past Murphy. Maxine Peak chasing this one. Now has some support. Uh, the ball was blocked. Uh, Montenegro under pressure from Oliverio. Too much pressure. Oliverio decidedly unpleased by that. And that's yeah, one of the clearest examples of what I think officials call descent by word or action. And that's the first yellow card of the game going to the Olympic skipper. A pretty good tempered game besides that, but just, yeah. Oliveira not happy with the decision, but yeah, refs aren't going to let you uh, get away with 
kicking the ball away like that in that situation without further sanction. And in fact, Jess Mullins a bit too quick. Mia Velarde was still doing her yellow card paperwork, I think, so can't restart. Can't, re can't restart the game until that's done. Now, Medallia. Toby. Toby does get some kind of a shot away. In fact, there we go. Well, yeah, uh, go. Uni actually back to 11 is Amanda Leviskevich. She did, didn't look good for her. She was having to be helped off the field, but uh, who's that physio? Give him, give them a pay rise because they've worked miracles to get Leviskevich back up and running for the last 10 minutes. do have a full-time score yep uh, well assuming the data entry is correct institute have beaten northern tigers by three goals to one As it's a uni throw in right here in front of the moya dodd stand uh, bottom air and bowling tried to curl it just to have the right idea though you know, there's, there's a little bit of space but uh, it didn't curl enough to stay in the field of play, so Rutstein could have a play at the ball. Montenegro getting some touches while she's in central midfield. Now the rotation, but it's broken for Bottomeo. Pass the tackle here, and then Chirac is back to defending, and she settles it by going back to the keeper, Sam Edwards. As Marley Stanton uh, attacking now down the left hand side after doing some very good work on the right hand side in the first 60 minutes or so that will be Olympics fifth corner <laughs> cool as arc as well yes. I mean, on set piece duty so not likely to be a chance for her to complete her hat trick although you could see Olympico is possible and she swings it in crowded six yard box and off an Olympic head there's the header that's Rutstein and she's off the bench onto the score sheet to make it UNSW 2 Sydney Olympic 5 they made enough of a nuisance of themselves from the set piece Daniel Rutstein with her first goal of the season and you'd have to say it's pretty much a five star performance although for Sydney Olympic it all might have come at a bit of a cost you can see Jess Mullins I think it was who will need some treatment it's always a bit tricky when you have these goal map scrambles and the balls in the air Rutstein might actually be being seen by the physios as well so I hope we do hope that um, uh, those two players are okay Uh, a bit of a drinks coming on, a bit of a discussions coming on the field, and uh, so Olympic preparing some subs. Yeah, they got they got one window and three more subs they could possibly make. So Jeff Abraham's possibly thinking about a change. Actually, where are we here? The joys of YouTube streaming. Let's see if I'm zoom in and just double check that I've called that goal correctly. Uh, Yeah, I see a number five. I'm pretty confident that that's Daniel Rothstein's goal. That she might have copped a bit of a sore one afterwards. Actually, what was that Maxine Peak? Anyway, so okay, Olympic. Ever oh, right, possibly that is Rothstein that they're just checking on, and now she is getting the congratulations. But stoppages, more, more of those. And we're still, we're still seeing how Jess Mullins is doing. She's at least sitting up, which is a good sign. 
but yeah, this will result in a bit more time added on to end the game than would usually be the case. So, this might be the time to ch talk about the streams coming up next weekend, the Catholic Easter weekend on NPL Women's New South Wales. And of course, just like this one, you can watch all of them via the live tab on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. It starts on Easter Sunday, the 31st, two games at 5, 5 p.m. I'll be calling the game from Cromer Park. But Manly United host uh, Blacktown Spartans also at 5 p.m. in seven days' time. It's Sydney Olympic versus Bulls FC Academy, and that'll be called by Christos Mavrobastakas. Then at the very odd kickoff time of 5.10 p.m. from the Arctic Circle on Sunday the 31st, it's Gladeswell Ravens versus the University of New South Wales. Then on the Catholic Easter Monday, 4.45 p.m. from Valentine Sports Park, Football New South Wales Institute versus RPL Leichhardt. Then Monday, 1st of April at 5 p.m., MacArthur Rams versus Northwest Sydney Spirit. With Rams coach Stephen Peters going up against one of his old clubs. And also 5 p.m. on the Easter Monday, Sydney University versus Illawarra Stingrays. Then rounding it off at 5.30 p.m. on Monday, the 1st of April, Northern Tigers versus Emerging Jets. And that will be called by a very welcome new addition to our commentary team, Annabelle Banfield, who called a dramatic one last weekend at North Taramara Recreation Area when Manly United came from behind the second half to beat Northern Tigers by three goals to do. And doing it with goals from a couple of former Northern Tigers players as well, Daisy Arrowsmith and Gemma Woolley. So Annabelle will be hoping for no more drama, you suspect. Now, Olympic back on the attack. Bottomeo outnumbered by gold jerseys. Now, Gabrielle Peak, Nice spin, but then couldn't get away from Chirac. Leviskevich. Beaten to the punch, I think, by Maxime Peak is Kulazakis. And Kulazakis going for the hat trick. Uh, it's unfortunate for her. Slipped. She slipped. As she was striking from range. Anyway, as the time runs down, time to kind of complete a thought about noticing how many former Sydney Uni players are in this, this Sydney Olympic match day squad. I mean, the short answer is lots. Gabrielle Peak, Ebony McHugh Tara Baudana, Brianna Oliverio, Maxine Peak, and Demi Kulazakis. As there's Peak with a shot that's off target. So it's six they started the game with. And also, to, worth noting, I believe Sabine Montenegro from UNSW, also a former Sydney Uni player. So she's switched unis, so to, so to speak. <coughs> and then games coming up. Uh, for these two teams, firstly for UNSW, as I mentioned earlier, next weekend they've got a trip to the Arctic Circle to face a Gladesville Ravens. Then on Sunday, the 7th of April, another away trip down to the south coast to face Illawarra Stingrays, as Leviskevich is running through here. Then for UNSW, Sunday, the 14th of April, they go up to Cromer Park to face the Queens from the Northern Beaches, Manly United. And then in round eight, Sunday, the 21st of April, they host Northwest City Spirit here at the Village Green. Oh, my apologies. That round seven game, Raven, oh, so UNSW versus Manly, that's actually not a Chroma Park. That's here at the Village Green. Well, yeah, there's going to be a substitution. Jeff Abraham's making another one. This is the, well, this will be the final one because this is the final window. And Marley Stanton, a great shift by the number 33, both on the right hand side and the left hand side. She'll get an early, a little bit of an early mark, a couple of minutes or so. And just waiting for a player to completely turn around. Aaron Diabatiotis is the player to replace Stanton. Corner kick coming up, by the way, for Olympic. They're sixth by my hand tally. Now, decent header in the... Decent in, it's in. Ebony McHugh Shore. Who came up from the back? She's got on the end of Kulazakis's corner, and it's UNSW two, Sydney Olympic six. The Kulazakis corner right on the money. She scored twice, and she set up a goal as well. Ebony M Ebony McHugh put that right in the bottom corner off her forehead. Perfect contact. That's exactly what you're looking for. And it's turning out to be a great day for Sydney Olympic. And of course, no fourth official. So in this comp, we won't know how much time added on there is. And here's Rudstein. Uh, looking for another one. Kulazakis. Left-footed shot. 
Trundles wide. Uh, you got a goal this, of course. Yeah, it could always matter at the end of the season. So you never know in 22 rounds' time how important these these couple of late second half goals could be for Sydney Olympic. And they're, they're still keen. They're keen for a seven. Kulazakis tries for the low curler, and it's a goal kick. By the way, coming up for Sydney Uni, uh, yep, on the Catholic Easter Sunday, Sunday the 31st of March. They host Bulls FC Academy at uh, Peter Moore Field, as I said earlier. Then on Saturday, the 6th of April, they, they travel to the Arctic Circle to face Northwest Sydney Spirit. And on Sunday, 14th of April, they host Sydney University, a club familiar to so many of their team, as I just said earlier. Cool as Arcus, by the way. Acute angle. And does it break for Oliverio? No, it doesn't. And then rounding that off in round eight for Sydney Olympics, Sunday, the 21st of April, they are the ones traveling to Cromer Park to face Manly United. Now, wait, you know, what are you told? It's broken for Medallia. And uh, Gabriel Peak, despite some consternation from the crowd, able to have win won that cleanly. But it's a uni corner and a chance to make the scoreline a little bit more respectable. They don't hang around, in fact. And it's a good defending there from uh, the substitute, Diabatiotis. Meanwhile, it's going to be almost seamless, uh, just looking at what's available on YouTube, because that the late kickoff, Bulls FC ver Academy versus RPL Leichhardt at Bound Nun Sports Park, caught by the People's Champion, Nicholas Kutniak. That's about to begin, so if you want, you could seamlessly switch from this game straight to that one. Toby uh, blocked off and McHugh back to the day job, so to speak. After scoring that goal, she's now defending inside her own box. Didn't let it get past her. I think that's more trying to keep it alive. And it's going to be a uni free kick. <laughs> and, uh, I forgot to bring my jacket, so I'm kind of glad the game's about to be over because it is. It's getting cold. Rob, our camera operator, much smarter than I am today. Yeah, big smile, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Rob's clearly the brains of this operation. <laughs> it's four in the wall that uh, Saka Kuyama has wanted. And I think Toby over the set piece. Now Leviskevich with a header, and it's 6-3. So Amanda Leviskevich picking up another goal in second half stoppage time. And yeah, as I said earlier, goal difference matters, so... Very, firstly, very nice header from Leviskevich. In fact, we're going to see another injury stoppage. But yeah, you could see Uni rushing to take the ball back to the center circle. Like, I mean, they're almost certainly not going to win this game. But as I said, goal difference may matter at the end of the season. So that's an important one for Olymp Olympic. Oh, sorry, for UNSW to try and get things restarted as quick as possible. And who knows? You might get another one. So who's the player who needs the treatment this time? Apologies, I can't quite see. <laughs> and it was Oliverio who actually looks to be here. Looks like, of course, you'll need to leave the field because the, the physio came on, but uh, walking freely. And 6-3, I don't know. Well, I mean, she'll want to come back on the field. You do wonder with so little time left, whether the best option is to actually check her, check her out properly and just get Olympic to see it out with 10 players. But I'm not a coach, so what, so what would I know? Well, Olympic, well, they're not going to hang around either. At least they want to see another goal as well. They want to score another goal as well. And that's really opening up. Number four on number four here. Toby versus Yamahata. And Toby... Toby has not won out. She's fouled her op her literal opposite number. <clears throat> of course, 
first grade, not like the other comps. You do actually play all the time added on as per the referee's discretion. So I'm you know, watching Mia Velarde's body language, but I think we've got, given, especially given the events of the second half, we've got a couple more minutes at least. Dalpane, who, of course, after... Well, she's actually found herself in central defence after, I think, that fortunate one for Jess Mullins. Kulazakis with the through ball, Maxine Peak chasing, Sam Edwards with the sweeper keeper work, sending it into the opposition half. Actually haven't seen Mia Velarde glance at the watch yet. Yeah, not yet, there it is now, so maybe a matter of seconds remaining. Montenegro left footer to left footer, Montenegro to Chirac. That's nice skill, but it's Lacey Bowling helping with the strength and numbers for Olympic. Another glance of the watch, so they can't be long left. Let's get ready to wrap this up. But one time for at least one more attack. Rudstein, and there's space for Kulazakis. There's Borromeo. Hits the turf in back play. That, oh, that's a big task for Lacey Bowling. Now, I think that's Medalia. Gabby Peak defending. Oliverio, yep, she's back on the field. Good to see. Defending as well. Whistles in the mouth, and there it is. It's a great day. And well, it's been a very entertaining high scoring game, but Sydney Olympic have defeated the University of New South Wales by, by six goals to three. And they opened the scoring with Maxine Peak before there was a very quick reply for UNSW from Sarah Moore, and then an even quicker response by Sydney Uni from Demi Kulazakis to make it 2 1. Marley Stanton then made it 3 1 before the break. Amanda Leviskevich pulled a goal back early in the second half for Sydney Uni to make it 3 2, but then. Olympic really made the goal. We really made the game safe with Demi Kulazakis' second goal and a goal for Daniel Rutstein, and then a goal for Ebony McHugh Shaw before Amanda Leviskevich scored again in a second half stoppage time. And that's how we got to the final score of UNSW 3, Sydney Olympic 6. Nine goals for your Saturday afternoon. I hope you enjoyed watching this. But now you can switch over to uh, the second half of Illawarra Stingrays versus Blacktown Spartans. And you can also watch on Football New South Wales YouTube Bulls FC Academy versus RPL Leichhardt called by the People's Champion Nicholas Kutniak that's five minutes in but for now this is Eric Sobihano signing off on behalf of our camera operator Rob and Football New South Wales thanks for joining us with our live YouTube stream of this game wishing you plenty of good vibes great coffee sick tattoos razzlers and high scoring thrillers see you next time